Welcome back, fellow mitochondriacs, for another episode of Cancer as a Mitochondrial Metabolic Disease. So as I alluded to in the last video, I wanted to talk about melatonin's role in mitochondrial dynamics. And the question I want to have answered today are, does melatonin have direct effects on mitochondrial fission and fusion? Does it have direct effects on mitophagy, mitochondrial biogenesis? Is there any relationship between melatonin and autophagy? Is there a role for melatonin in neurodegenerative diseases? These are all the questions that we're going to answer today in today's video. Hi there, I'm Dr. Casey Peebler, practicing hospitalist in South Florida, who is essentially fed up with the explosion of preventable diseases and the excess of suffering that I see on a day-to-day -day basis in the hospital. And I am passionate about mitochondrial function, mitochondrial medicine, cancer biology, cancer metabolism, and mitochondrial metabolic therapies. So let's dive into it. We are going to go back to talking about mitochondrial dynamics. If you need to refresh, I have a whole kind of micro series on mitochondrial dynamics and how they are important for the mitochondrial life cycle and mitochondrial health. But if you remember right, although all the mitochondrial dynamics are important, some of them seem to be more health promoting and some of them seem to be disease promoting or at least not allowing us to function maximally at our potential. And the first topic within the mitochondrial dynamics I wanted to talk about was fission infusion. And this paper is titled, The Potential Influence of Melatonin on Mitochondrial Quality Control, a Review. And what it says here is that mitochondria are critical for cellular energetic metabolism, intracellular signaling orchestration, and program death regulation. Therefore, mitochondrial dysfunction is associated with various pathogenesis. The maintenance of mitochondrial homeostasis and functional recovery after injury are coordinated by mitochondrial biogenesis, dynamics, fission fusion, mitochondria specific autophagy or mitophagy, which are collectively referred to as mitochondrial quality control. There is increasing evidence that mitochondria are important targets for melatonin to exert protective effects under pathologic conditions. Melatonin, an evolutionary conserved tryptophan metabolite, can be synthesized, transported, and metabolized in mitochondria. In this review, we summarize the important role of melatonin in damaged mitochondrial elimination and mitochondrial energy supply recovery by regulating mitochondrial quality control, which may provide new strategies for clinical treatment of mitochondria-related diseases. I like the sound of this. I like where this is going. So let's take a look at this diagram here in a little more detail. So we see that an MT stands for melatonin. So we see that in general, as a gestalt, melatonin is going to promote mitochondrial fusion, and it's going to go through a variety of pathways, inhibition of calcium overload, inhibition of excess mitochondrial reactive oxygen species. It's going to work through AMP kinase, AMPK. It's going to work through this HIPPO pathway, which is going to recruit downstream proteins, which we talked about during the mitochondrial dynamics series, OPA1, mitofusin 1 and 2, which is going to promote mitochondrial fusion and going to have its beneficial downstream effects of more efficient mitochondrial ATP production, et cetera, et cetera. And it's also, in addition, through its actions upon CERT3, PGC1-alpha, cardiolipin, AMP kinase again, it's going to inhibit fission proteins, DRP1 and FIS1, and basically inhibit mitochondrial fission from occurring in excess. And it's going to leave us with a balance that is more favorable for health promotion. I thought this was a really cool title paper. Melatonin improves skeletal muscle structure and oxidative phenotype by regulating mitochondrial dynamics and autophagy in these Zucker diabetic fatty rats. And what it says here is, interestingly, melatonin treatment partially restored mitochondrial fission fusion imbalance in RVL, and that stands for red vasus lateralis, a muscle, by enhancing the expression of fission FIS1 and DRP1 markers and decreasing that of fusion OPA1 and mitofusion 2 markers. It was also found to restore autophagy as indicated by increased P62 protein levels, L3CB2 to 1 ratio. In addition, melatonin treatment increased CERT1 protein level, mitochondrial ATP production, and SOD activity and decreased nitrate production. These effects were associated with enhanced oxidative phenotype and evidenced by amplified oxidative fiber marker expression, histochemical reaction for NADH enzyme, and muscular lipid content. In this study, we showed that melatonin might have potential therapeutic implications for obesity-induced skeletal muscle metabolic inflexibility among patients with obesity and type 2 diabetes. All right, let's see if we can unpack what that paper is saying. So essentially, in these 
diabetic and obese rats and their muscle fibers. We see that there's an imbalance between fission and fusion. And what melatonin essentially is doing is it is allowing for the mitochondrial dynamics to work out so that there is overall improved mitochondrial function. And we see that the imbalance is that there is decreased ATP production, there's an increased mitochondrial oxidative stress, INOS, and decreased SOD activity, superoxide dismutase activity, and lipid content. And what they're saying is there's, in this case, they're talking about a decreased amount of fission, which if you remember back from the mitochondrial dynamics lectures, there has to be at least some degree of fission that occurs that separates out the good portions of the mitochondria and the damaged portions of mitochondria so that those damaged portions of mitochondria, which are producing the excess oxidative stress, which are having decreased amounts of ATP production, are being able to be recycled and removed from the system as a whole that restores the balance. And that's exactly what we see here. We see that melatonin, when it's administered to these particular models, it increases fission and allows an increased amount of mitophagy to occur. And what happens is there's an increase in ATP production, decrease in oxidative stress and lipid content, which then leads to improved function of these muscles. That's why you really can't look at one of these dynamics as either good or bad. They're really, they're doing the best they can, probably the best they could do to maintain some level of function. In this case, before melatonin was added, it's just that that wasn't the answer. Ultimately, we needed it to break off and separate the bad and then recycle that bad through mitophagy. Now, the next question that we had was, what is the relationship between melatonin and mitochondrial biogenesis? And we can see that melatonin has a direct effect on AMP kinase and AMP kinase then can signal through PGC1 alpha and PGC1 alpha being the master regulator of mitochondrial biogenesis and ultimately the increased amount of respiratory gene products, mitochondrial DNA replication and new mitochondria, which then improve mitochondrial function, which will ultimately lead to improved organ function. And it will decrease the necessary amount of apoptosis preserving the organ. So we're not having excess cell loss. If you remember the graph that I showed during the video on the reversal of mitochondrial heteroplasmy, you will remember that it requires a couple different processes to be enhanced or maximized. That is first and foremost, the restoration and enhancement of mitophagy or mitochondrial specific autophagy and increases in mitochondrial biogenesis. Those two, when they are enhanced and maximized, will help tip the seesaw in your favor to mitigate excess mitochondrial heteroplasmy and reverse mitochondrial heteroplasmy. And so far, what we've talked about when it comes to melatonin with being, number one, a potent antioxidant and anti-inflammatory, protecting mitochondria from damage, protecting cardiolipin, protecting the super complex formation and enhancing ATP production. Then we're favoring, when it makes sense, fusion over fission, which is generally health promoting. We are enhancing mitophagy, mitochondrial specific autophagy, removing damaged mitochondrial components and mitochondria as a whole. And as you can see in this slide, we are enhancing mitochondrial biogenesis. So is it too far of a stretch to say that melatonin is a major factor when it comes to mitigation of excess mitochondrial heteroplasmy and the reversal of mitochondrial heteroplasmy, similar to what I alluded to during the vitamin D series? And the answer is no. These two potent biomolecules, vitamin D and melatonin, have profound effects, pleiotrophic effects on mitochondria and the prevention of mitochondrial related disease. I cannot underscore that enough. So how does melatonin relate to autophagy as a whole? Well, it's been described in this paper as an endogenous regulator of disease, the role of autophagy. And it says melatonin has long been known for its apparent effects on sleep and circadian rhythm. It may participate as a possible therapeutic agent in neurodegenerative, cardiovascular, and endocrine disorders as well. Autophagy is a lysosomal degradation process that occurs in response to starvation and other stresses. Recent studies have reported that melatonin may modulate the autophagy process. We reviewed the current literature that is reported on how different diseases and 
experimental models change autophagy parameters. We also discuss the effect of melatonin on autophagy parameters in the central nervous, cardiovascular, gastrointestinal, and endocrine systems as reported in non-clinical studies. Moreover, the molecular targets for melatonin are discussed in detail. In summary, melatonin has been reported to enhance significant protective effects in different in vitro and in vivo studies, either through enhancement or inhibition of the autophagy process. Melatonin holds promise in the treatment of several major diseases. Regulation of autophagy by melatonin is a determinate parameter that should be considered in future studies. This brings me to a larger point that I have discussed in prior videos. These biomolecules that are miraculous and their abilities seem to have a level of intelligence to them. And the reason I say that is because how can one molecule, vitamin D, in one context be a potent antioxidant, mitochondrial enhancer, and promote autophagy, similar to melatonin, potent antioxidant, promotes autophagy, mitochondrial function, fission, fusion, mitophagy, biogenesis, et cetera, right? Promotes autophagy as a whole. But in other systems and other disease processes like cancer, where there's excess mitophagy that can further propagate cancer and the Warburg effect, where there's excess autophagy and cancer uses autophagy to protect itself from excess apoptosis, programmed cell death that protects cancer from the immune system. Vitamin D and melatonin can essentially increase reactive oxygen species in cancer and can actually inhibit autophagy in the context of cancer, which is astounding. It's the exact opposite mechanism. How is that possible? I don't know, but it happens and it's amazing for our chances of reversing these at times seemingly irreversible processes. So this paper is titled Melatonin and Autophagy and Age-Related Neurodegenerative Diseases. And it says here that in this review, we briefly discussed the neuroprotective effect of melatonin against various neurodegenerative diseases via regulating autophagy, which could be a new field for future translational research and clinical studies to discover preventive or therapeutic agents for many neurodegenerative diseases. Let's take a look at this diagram here. And just to be clear about what we're talking about with neurodegeneration, and this paper is talking about Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's disease, Huntington's disease, and organophosphate-related neuropathy, as well as ALS, or amyotrophic lateral sclerosis. A lot of heavy-hitting diseases that were all affected by melatonin. And as we can see here, melatonin MT is having a positive effect on AMP kinase, is inhibiting mTOR, and is having an effect on ROS, which is going to initiate the autophagy process. Melatonin is also going to protect mitochondrial DNA from leading to apoptosis when it's found free in the cytoplasm. It's going to have several effects on the antioxidant response element, genes, upregulation of superoxide dismutase, glutathione peroxidase, catalase, and the uncoupling proteins to help protect against excess ROS, which again, will allow the autophagy process to be fully activated. It's going to have direct effects on the nucleation process, the elongation process, and the fusion with the autophagosomes and autolysosomes for the full and complete degradation of dysfunctional cellular components. Essentially, melatonin is directly guiding the entire autophagy process from start to finish. Unbelievable. And how does that necessarily fit in with neuroprotection? Well, melatonin, as you can see, regulates LC32, Beclin1, P62, mTOR, CKD5, GSK3, suppresses alpha-synuclein, which is found in Parkinson's disease, decreases tau phosphorylation, flushes out A-beta accumulation, reduces A-beta toxicity, ultimately relating to the regulation of autophagy and protection against Alzheimer's and Parkinson's diseases and the maintenance of neuroprotective functions. Astounding. I'm going to end on this important slide, and that is a paper titled Melatonin and the Regulation of Autophagy, Mechanisms and Therapeutic Implications. And it says here that in this review, we focus on specific pathologic conditions, including ischemia, reperfusion injuries, IRI, cancer, neurodegenerative diseases, and elucidate the essential role of melatonin in the modulation of mitophagy and each of these distinct disorders. So essentially we have some stressor in terms of excess reactive oxygen species, oxidative stress, inflammation, hyperinsulinemia, hyperglycemia, a variety of cellular stressors that leads to 
mitophagy and melatonin is responsible for basically both the gas and the break of this process. In processes where there is an excess of mitophagy, melatonin will put a break on it. Where there's a need for mitophagy, melatonin will activate. And that is important as we'll see for a variety of conditions, but in particular in this cancer series, because as we've seen in prior videos, excess mitophagy is hijacked by cancer systems to propagate the reliance on the Warburg metabolism and melatonin can, in the right context, inhibit that process from happening to help in our fight against cancer. Melatonin, an endogenous regulator of disease through a whole host of mechanisms by protecting mitochondrial function at the level of the mitochondrial crystal shape, the prevention of excess oxidative stress and damage to mitochondrial DNA, the assistance and formation of the mitochondrial supercomplex, maximal ATP production and mitigation of ROS, RNS through these mitochondrial dynamics favoring fusion over fission and less fission is needed to lead to mitophagy when necessary and autophagy as a whole. But again, not an all or nothing phenomenon where we have discernment between differential pathologic conditions where if mitophagy or autophagy is needed for the reversal of disease, melatonin steps in and provides that initiation and guides that process. And if there's an excess pathologic use of these processes, mitophagy and autophagy, melatonin can apply the break to help protect against excesses and pathological uses of these processes. It really is a harmonious, unbelievable, near magical system that we are looking at here today with melatonin. If I have not yet made the case that melatonin is incredibly important for your health, I would be very surprised. And if you could maybe in the comments share what is the most surprising role that melatonin plays in our human physiology, that would be pretty cool. If you like videos like this, please like, share, subscribe. And until next time.